YouTube world, I'm back. Do you know, it's beginning of February and it's a beautiful day out there. Squirrels running around and birds singing. It's a little bit parky though, so <laughs> I'm just squeezing my hands into my extra small gloves. Um, this is beginners video number six wow six already um and this is a swipe i love swipes every fluid artist has a technique that they are drawn to sometimes when you're starting out you probably have to try lots of techniques to find out which one you like um but a swipe is probably one of the I think it's the easiest ones to do. Um, I, I do. There's, there's a saying in fluid art, if in doubt, swipe. And that means that <laughs> if you have a painting that you, you don't like, it's not going well, you really want to give up, you can always swipe over it. You can always swipe over it. So, We're going to do two and I am purely using, I don't know if you can see, I don't know whether the colours are on frame, but I am using all leftover colours from workshops and what I do is if there's a little dribble of paint um, left over, I will put it in one of these, one of these um, little plastic tubs with a lid and I will mix colours. So this might be a mixture of a few different greens. <laughs> I know it is. Um, whoops. I know that this is a mixture of a few different blues. It's a beautiful colour. Um, so on this side, two swipes, we're going to do kind of an aqua theme. And I have got aqua blues, blue and silver. And I've also got this is the PBO DYNA orange. And I have no idea what this is, but it's obviously it's obviously orange. I think it's cadmium one. Looks bright enough to be that. This side is um, just different varieties of green. It's quite a dark green, a sap green. That's obviously quite bright green. I'm sorry, I can't be any more specific than that, but I hate waste. That's quite fluid, that one. Um, I also have some deep red. I think that might be the... Uh, kind of looks like Illyrian Crimson-ish-esque. We'll see. And I've got some, that looks like yellow ochre. Now, obviously these paints have been sat around for quite a while actually. And I've made sure that I've given them a really good stir. And I will stir them again just before I've used them. Let's talk about consistencies. What I've demonstrated so far, consistency is extremely important, but a swipe, it's a little bit more forgiving. So I know that some of these paints, because they've been used by students, they, they might be a little bit on the thinner side, which is okay for a swipe actually, because you wanna get some nice effects. So I'm not gonna to worry too much about doing a consistency check for this. What is important is the color that you swipe with. Now, I have some of my Amsterdam white here, and if you watch my paint mixing tutorial, here's the link, you will know that this is the thickness, this is my benchmark for most of, uh, most of the techniques that I do, except for a swipe. 
And as I've explained before, white is a heavy density paint and it will sink. So whatever colour you choose to swipe with, it wants to be a heavy density paint that will sink. Now I started life um, on a fluid artist swiping with um, swiping with all golden colours because I had money then. I'm a poor artist now, so I very rarely use golden colours. But I knew that if I swiped with a heavy density paint over a lighter density paint, they would sink and these would come to the top and I'd get lovely effects without using silicone. There you go. But that's not the case now. I'm just going to grab a, an example, actually, of a swipe. So this is just a little workshop demo. And I can tell you that this did not go well. I swiped this three times, so it weakened the colours, but I knew why I had to sweep, swipe three times because my white was too thick and I hadn't thinned it down enough. So that's what I'm going to do now. And this is the kind of swipe we're going to do. I like swipes that mean something, that have a little bit of a garden feel or an underwater feel to them. Um, so this is what we're gonna, this is what I'm gonna demonstrate. Now, I'm just going to move all these out of the way. I've had a really good clean up in my studio. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to spill paint. Okay, now, this is going to be my background, okay? And I need to water it down. Now, I can't, I can't tell you how much water that I add because You just have to feel your way, okay? So there I, I have added a couple of big squirts. And what I'm looking for is the paint to fall off of the stick and not make any mound at all, at all. I want it to feel loose. I don't want it to feel heavy. I don't want there to be any resistance when I stir it at all. That's about right. It could probably go a little bit more actually, but we're gonna go, we're gonna, we're going to stick with this. So. It literally just falls straight in, not doesn't leave a mound, nothing. Okay. I have two of these made up, and if I need to thin it for the next one, I will. So, paint catcher. If you need a refreshing on equipment, here's the equipment video. Have I just said that? I don't know. I, I, I film and I forget what I've said and what I haven't said. Right, so a swipe. We need to have a base coat down for a swipe. Um, this is one of those techniques where you do need a base coat. So with my whites, I'm simply going to pour a reasonable sized puddle in the middle of my canvas. I'm not going to worry about air bubbles at the minute. I am going to use paint catcher because I want to preserve paint and keep it on the canvas for the moment. Now I'm quite hot on the backgrounds. I don't like to see um, thick backgrounds or um, how can I explain it? Uneven backgrounds. 
I like to, and I always don't, I never put enough paint on. Whoops, it's a good start, isn't it? Be generous is what I'm saying. Just be generous with your background. It's no good skimping. I've covered my canvas really well there, but I don't want to leave so much paint on the canvas, okay? I want to get some of that paint off. If you can see it's still moving, keep tilting. A lot of people can um, skip or not realise how long it takes to do a good back, do a good base for an acrylic swipe. Don't don't skimp. Don't skimp on doing this. Take your time. Lots of air bubbles. There we go, look at that nice smooth background. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply my colour. And there's so many ways that you can do this. And everybody has their own way. You can fling it at the canvas all over. You can use squeezy bottle to squirt it on. You can just do some lines at the top and drag white over. It really is up to you, but I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to do it my way. I'm just going to wipe my hands. So I generally start from light to dark and I'm going to start off with my silver. And a little bit of silver left. I have no idea which one this is. This could be the Silver Limit. Yes, Silver Limit by Dale and Rooney, graduate. And I literally use my um, stick just to lay the colour down. I'll just stick a bit down there. I love the freedom of this, I really do. What you want to do is you want to start to overlap your colours. Because we want to get some nice effects. might be a little bit of left field this blue. I'm going to use this sparingly. I've got a feeling this is cerulean, cerulean blue and that is just a vicious blue. Vicious. In other words, it takes over. 
You can see already how the silver sinks. That blue's coming to the surface. And you, you do get to know your paints, you do. You get to know what they do. Now what I'll do now is I will just check that there's not too much paint on the canvas and I'll just tilt some of it off. done it's, it's just tilted a little bit off but it's also covered my sides I like to see sides in a swipe right now how comes the fun bit a little bit of paint there that I'm not going to worry about Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a little bit more water. And a swipe does take a bit of practice. Although it's easy, you know, you, you might, you know, not get too many effects and think, oh, I'm just going to make my white a little bit thinner. So you can see there, I've got some white at the top. I'm going to spray my kitchen roll with um, spray just off camera. Now I've just dampened it, I haven't soaked it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this piece of kitchen roll, not over the edge, but into that white. If you put it over the edge, then you'll drag you'll get bare canvas. Just let that grab hold of that white and then just simply drag that over your colours and let it fall off the edge so that it coats the bottom edge of your canvas. And I'm gonna give that a torch. leave that well alone and you'll begin to see that the cells will start to pop up and we're going to get on with this one
That's, that is quite a lot of paint on there. Now, because I've used complementary colours, I, I don't want to swipe more than once because you're asking for trouble. So if you go back to colour theory, you know, two complementary colours side by side will make each other pop. They'll be beautiful together. But the minute you start mixing them, they begin to kill each other off. And that's where you get mud. I am just going to spray my little piece of kitchen off. Move these out the way. Oh, I almost forgot my white. into the paint at the top. And it's easier if you lean against your table. So my belly is leaning against the table. Ooh. <laughs> okay. So yellow is quite a reactionary paint too. Let's give that a torch. Now I am going to leave those for half an hour at least, and then we're going to come back and we're going to start making a little composition of them both. Now, I like negative space in a swipe. That's why, I mean, this one, I could probably go on a little bit less, but that's okay. I can live with that. Um, this one's about right, but I'm just gonna leave them for a little while and um, see what happens. Another cup of tea. Okay, so it's it's only been two minutes actually. And I'm just looking at this one thinking it's all a bit blah. I, I, there needs to be more contrast in it for me. So what I'm going to do, obviously we've lost some of this red. Let's do a little bit down there. But I'm just going to put a little bit more red in. And a little bit more of this dark green. Okay. And I'm going to just put a little bit more yellow in. Down here. So this is how forgiving a swipe can be. It's a good demo actually. Let's just go up a bit further.
that's a bit better. Now I'm going to have a cup of tea. So it has been a good half an hour. I left the time lapse on there just for part of the, part of the way, just so you can see how it continues to develop. Now, can you see here? There's some bare canvas. Now that tells me these are really cheap canvases. I don't buy expensive canvases to um, demonstrate on. There was obviously some, some grease on these canvases. Um, a little bit like silicone, if it hits the canvas first, then the paint is not going to take. And sometimes it's worth rubbing some alcohol over the top um, the day before you're going to use the canvas, just to make sure it's completely clean. Or I, I might have had some grease on my hands, I might have used some hand cream this morning. Um, so all these things can contribute to that happening, but I'm not worried. I'm not worried about that. Because... This is where I like to get jiggy with a swipe. Um, I have a knit and needle here. That's a good thing to use. Um, but I, I, I still prefer the good old fashioned skewer. Um, you can see that I've turned that one the other way up. I've not done it before, so we'll see what happens. Because I, I kind of wanted to do a bit of an underwater feel. There's a, a little bit too much negative space, but we'll see what we can do about that. Now, that cerulean blue, I told you, I told you it's vicious. Um, it just takes over. In fact, I'm thinking about stopping people using it in workshops, because if they use too much of it, <laughs> they wonder why they have a blue painting. Anyway, this has gone off for a good 45 minutes. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to break up these ugly patches. Um, and I'm going to break up these um, cells. Because, and, and some people are given the choice. They like it as it is. Me personally, I like to do something with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going, I think I'm going to work on this one first. Um, and I'm just going to hold the stick side on. I'm not, it's not, you know, straight down, it's side on, okay? And I am going to just literally drag the whites through. And split. those big cells up. Now I can leave the paint on the cat on the edge of the stick without rubbing it off. And that will continue to develop. So that's a way of bringing that colour down. I don't like to do too many, but if I've got a big area like this, what I'll do is I'll just pull those in a little bit more. Just for some fine detail, just for the fun of it. You can overdo it, so I'm not going to do any more now. So that's that one. 
<laughs> it's quite nice actually. Stop. This one. So I look at the bigger areas that I want to dissect. I do try and follow the lines of the paint as well. I'm not being completely random. So these bits, I'm just going to work on some um, foreground detail through it. I could pick some paint off the piddle pad. Whoops, that one went a bit wonky. Take you down for a closer look, Sean. It's quite a cutie, really. This one. Now that orange, that DYNA orange, always dries beautifully and a lot darker. It's quite a sweet one. And this has got a garden feel. Nice lace, lovely lace in effect down there. So I've done quite a few swipes in my time. Um, over darker backgrounds, black backgrounds. I mean, the, the sky's the limit, really. But this is one technique that I've learned to incorporate into whatever I do, a landscape pour, you know, I always will swipe an element of it. It's, and it's a bit like using a paintbrush, you're creating a composition. So let's see how these dries, shall we? Back with dried results. Actually, these dried really quickly. I think it's probably because with the swipe technique, you don't actually leave too much paint on the canvas. The kitchen roll as you swipe does actually take quite a bit off. So it's literally been um, about three days. I, I still wouldn't varnish them. I'd still leave them well alone for another few weeks. Um, I wish I had more swipes to show you. <laughs> but you'd guess. I guess you'd just have to look back on my videos. I think, I don't even know where they all are. I, I guess um, they've just gone. <laughs> they've been sold or given away or whatever. Um, so... I like this one because it's got big juicy cells um, and I, I swiped over that three or four times. So I do like that. These are more these are a lot smaller. Still really nice detail. Um this one 
Obviously, as I said before, I don't know what colours they were. They're a right mixture and it's demonstration purposes only. I kind of wish that I'd, I'd taken my stick and gone down the way, not up the way. Down the way? Yes, down that way. Down this way. So it brought more, more of the colour down using the stick. But you can view it that way. You can view it that way. That way. So a ghost swipe, I don't particularly like the name, I don't know who invented it, but originally Courtney Holscher, this was her technique um, and it was done with using uh, bands of colour through the centre of a canvas, you swipe down and then you swiped up to, to get this really contemporary um, contemporary paintings and at, over time people have uh, adapted and used her technique and and really made it their own and you can get a bloom swipe you can swipe with obviously satin enamels to get the kind of a cloud swipe all sorts of different techniques um, and if, if you're in the UK and part of the UK Facebook group there is a uh, files in the files there was a document and you can read through if you like reading you can read through all the different swipes that that there are sky's the limit and this is one technique that you really can make it your own i mean who's to say that you swipe horizontal you know vertically horizontally diagonally i've said before that if you're creating the landscape or a certain composition i will i will throw any technique at a canvas at a painting to make it work. I'm waffling today. This is dried really nice too. I love the bright the bright colours and as you look closer there's some real lovely colours that have come out. Lime this lime green. It's really very nice and then you've got the darkness. Now I said in my video I don't want to confuse you that if you swipe more than twice three times and you're using complementary colours you're asking for mud and you are and I probably have a little bit down here and on this one but I think I've just managed to get away with it because I added more colour I didn't swipe with the same colours I added more got a garden garden feel to it so that's the swipe very simple Give it a go, let me see your results and um, let me know what particular technique you'd like me to do next time and I'll try and really, really break it down to make it as simple as possible. There you go, thanks for watching.